Good evening. Good evening. Let me ask you this question. How much does a polar bear weigh? Mm, Enough pounds. to break the ice. <laughs> Good evening, my name is Dave Stevens. It's my pleasure to be up here speaking before you. Who am I? Where did I come from? What do I do? These are all three good questions do you expect to be answered during this speech. However, being just under 30 years old, I've lived a pretty full life. I couldn't do it justice to try to squeeze all that within this short amount of time. So today I'm just going to kind of give you a broad overview of who I am and what I do. And I'm going to use the analogy of a pyramid to help me explain this. So first, what does every pyramid begin with? A solid base. You've got to have a good foundation. I think you all would agree with me that your foundation is the same as mine. It's your family. My parents made me the man who I am today. However, it's my wife and my two children that continue to make me the man who I am. I married my high school sweetheart. We met when we were sophomores in high school. That was 14 years ago. And we got married 10 years ago. We have a beautiful daughter, Victoria Nicole, who's 10 going on 17. <laughs> and another daughter, Gwyneth Michelle, who's 7 years old. They both show me the meaning of life every day. My youngest daughter is visually impaired. She's actually legally blind. So she shows me perseverance and determination each and every day. That gave me the solid foundation to build my life's pyramid. So above that foundation, we get to the body of the pyramid. Every pyramid has tunnels, dead ends, booby traps, and other paths that you can take. Mine's no different. My first path in life began when I was graduating high school. I was given an opportunity to be a professional stage technician in the entertainment industry. For those of you who may not know what that is, I did all the lighting, the sound, the set building, and the stage management for rock bands, hip hop artists, musicals, Grammys, Oscars. I worked all over the place. And I did that pretty successfully for a year and a half. But then I had my daughter, and I said I didn't want to be an absentee father. I didn't want to be a father parenting from a distance. So I took the opportunity to move home. That's where my dead end happened, and I started excavating a new path. At the same time, I was given a phone call by one of my former teachers at the high school saying, hey, we're coming up with a new performing arts high school in Long Beach. Are you interested in doing the technical theater aspect of it, build up this new program? Sure. Jumped at the chance. <clears throat> 19 years old, heading up a brand new technical theater department. <laughs> Did it for nine years. I just left recently, about a year ago. And that's where my booby trap happened. I trained over 1,000 high school students to be professional stage techs. I loved what I did. I loved the impact they gave me. I loved the impact that I had on them. Some of them went on to earn master's degrees and bachelor's degrees in technical theater. Some are out on tour right now. I'm waiting for one of them to get the first Tony because they, they all promise me they'll give it to me when they get it. <laughs> but the politics within administration is just horrible at a public high school. And I decided that my passion was gone and I did not belong there anymore. So I excavated a new path, went back to school, I graduated from Long Beach City College with my Associate Arts and Communication Studies with high distinct honors. I'm currently at Cal State in Long Beach holding on to a 4.0 and I'm trying. It's finals week this week. Um, I hold on to my 4.0 at Cal State Long Beach, studying <laughs> communication studies, focusing on interpersonal communication and conflict resolution, which there really is no resolution to conflict if any of you are curious. It's just managing the conflict is more like it. I'm contemplating either going into grad school or going into law school. I don't know where my journey is going to take me yet. I'm still excavating that path, and hopefully it leads me to the riches and the booties that lay within the pyramid. Mm. But every pyramid ends with a capstone up top. What's my capstone going to be? Is it going to be the all-seeing eye like the dollar bill? Or is it going to be gold encrusted? Or is it just going to be plain Jane? I don't know. That won't be decided until I leave. When my time here on earth is done, my capstone will be built. But there is a quote that I'm going to leave you with tonight that helps me build that capstone as I'm here. And that quote is, always aspire to inspire before you expire. <laughs> 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 And the first person that evaluated evaluate David Steve, Stevens? Stevens. Stevens is Aldo, and Aldo's not here, so it's Maya. So Maya, let's all give her a big hand.
Expectations. Let's see. Evaluator. Good evening, fellow Toastmasters, and of course, David. I'm honored to evaluate David. This is his first speech to Icebreaker speech, and he did a phenomenal job. He did a really good job. I felt that he was very natural when he came here, and I already saw his a little bit of the taste of how he delivers speeches, and he's been delivering. It seems very natural to you. It seems natural. Great delivery, very clear, great content. In a very short time for four to six minutes of speaking here, that's his criteria, he was able to put in a lot of meat in it. We, I think that we can take away a lot of things that we know a lot more than we did before mm -hmm. about David. So we know about his passion about communication and being able to teach a thousand teen high school, that's that's you know a high school student. That's not easy, <laughs> right? <laughs> but um, taking on that task, I definitely can see that you have a very strong leadership already. You have a very strong foundation. You use no notes, which is awesome. And he asked me to look for his hands movements and his gestures and also his awes. I didn't hear any awes. And if I, then I was too, I was too taken by your speech, it was great. Your, in terms of your hands, yes, I took a seminar about how to evaluate people, people, and the more evaluation that you do, the better speaker you'll be, right? Because that's how it goes hand in hand. Mm -hmm. And hands are definitely the hardest to, to handle. <laughs> but I believe that if you can take Renee's kind of speech that he was using his hands, that would be something that you can probably incorporate. He is a DTM, and I, when I saw his uh, his third speak, the third speaker, he was able to incorporate his hands with the stories. So if you can incorporate your hand gestures with uh, incorporating with the stories, it becomes more natural. And also the takeaway is pause. You, you spoke kind of a little bit too fast. And I, I, I hear you and I digest it, but it was a little bit kind of too, for me to, to swallow everything. So a little bit pause. And you, you stopped at four minutes and 30 seconds. You had a lot of time. So you had, I wanted to hear more about you. And I said, darn, it's only the green light. He had like another minute or so to, to emphasize about you. And that's the only takeaway I have. You have a great, bright future ahead of you. And congratulations on your first speech.